Welcome to part 36 of the mod making series for locked flue containers. As you can see, it is very late. This is probably going to be one of my shortest uh, little episodes here, honestly, because I would like to go to bed. And I didn't really get too much done today because it was kind of, I don't know, it's just I was doing some stuff on my cleaning some stuff on my PC, change, trying to change my fans and stuff. And something that should have taken an hour took like three plus hours. And I wasn't even able to do one of the things I wanted to do in there, and it was just all screwed up. So I was like, ah, well, no time today, It's it felt like. So, yeah. But I did make, I guess, you know, just rushing together did make a little bit of stuff here. So I'm just going to explain it real quick and that's it. So I tried to do something to uh, make it so the locks would not, uh, would, would be restricted to a certain range of uh, potential material values based on what the chest that it is attached to is made of. Uh, I just did an if statement here where it's checking the thing it's iterating from and the little hat picker ticket thing. And then minusing two and checking if it's less than that. And then if it is, then continuing the loop. So like saying like, all right, don't add tickets for that material. And then the the reverse for the uh, the upper ranges. So it can't be too high or too low kind of thing. I have no clue if this is actually going to work. So I'm just going to have to do live debug testing for it because i don't know I'm, I'm like looking at the numbers i'm like wait how is this gonna work just just in the concept and it makes sense in my head but then i'm thinking like well does it actually gonna work so i'm gonna have to do testing for that so but you know hopefully that works in some way um it's not perfect obviously because the chests are not like a linear like this is just objectively better than the other kind of thing so i'll probably have to want to change that later with some kind of like more general kind of value determining that like a rarity thing or a protection level that's like a general averaging out of the how uh how valuable or protective or something that a material is whatever but right now that's just how i got it there and then I also tried to do something to, in theory, combat the uh, pattern. The patterns that happen with the uh, Unity random number generation stuff. Uh, this is something that is used in at least once. A few, I think it's a few other times, but this is the main one I always remember. is in Daggerfall Guild Service pop-up window in the get merchant magic items thing which so basically in doll staggerfall the merchants for all of the guild halls all have a set inventory based on some random seed i guess so every merchant um magic item merchant that you go to to any ma mages guild hall in any city they will always have the same st stock of inventory for that particular place every time so if you buy like a magic shield that it's like an ebony shield of levitation or some shit every time you open up that magic item uh magic merchants inventory it'll always restock that that shield same thing with soul gems and everything else it's always the same but an attempt to kind of combat that what interkarma did in uh daggerfall unity is he instead gave it a sort of static seed, uh, but it changes every in-game day to something else. Um, I'm not sure how that works exactly if you go to, like, um, yeah, I don't know if you go to, like, a different, um, town before that day goes up or something. I don't know. I don't know, but I, the, the idea is that it's it it doesn't randomize every time you open it but it does randomize at least within 24 hours of that time you open it kind of deal or something something of that sort but the idea is that it's generating its own kind of seed based on that so it's always the same if uh 
the day has not changed, kind of. Like, if, if the day hasn't been 24 hours yet, it, like, the, the seed value is going to always be the same for that day, sort of, I, I think. Um, and then it sets that into the thing unity engine dot random dot any state and then seed which basically says initialize the random number generator state with a seed so however the hell that works i was reading the documentation and it's still kind of confusing i just in concept i guess more than anything than an execution but yeah i'm copying from that and Right now, I just have a placeholder value of 1, but what I'm going to do next time I work on this, or probably try to, is, like I said, possibly use, like, the load ID value of the, uh, the loot pile in question. And then also the tran uh, transform values, the X, Y, and Z transform values, and then combine those together to make some number. And maybe they'll, like, splice those somehow into the the middle of that load ID or some shit. And then maybe use a hash code to, like, make those into different numbers based on what they are. So, I don't know. Something, some weird shit like that I'm gonna try, I guess. Which might be, honestly, the stupidest thing I'm trying to do, honestly. Because I don't even know if the, if that's actually, like... In, th in the concept theory of the pseudo-random number generation, like, if that's actually a good way to do that or not. But it's kind of the only way I, get, I can currently think of that that would hopefully do what I'm trying to do, make it, make it less pattern... make it so there's less obvious patterns that happen during this generation stuff. But the time that I'm actually doing this, at least that's what I'm hoping, is... Basically, right at the beginning of the generation for the chest process, if it succeeds and says that there should be a chest put here. So it it um, populates this seed with something, and then uh, at the end, after the m main random things have been rolled and such, like the materials, the, uh, the chest resistance values, the sturdiness... Like I said, I don't know. I might have to. I might have to re-roll them in other cases too, or something for the other values each time. I don't know, but I'll just have to see like what the numbers start looking like when I try this sort of thing. But then at the end of that, of all that stuff, I kind of quote unquote reset the uh, init state, random init state to uh, date time dot now dot ticks, which apparently that's like, the default that Unity uses for its random number generation seed is, uh, is that, I guess. So I try to reset it back to that just so any other random stuff that happens after this point is going by the Unity, I guess, default rather than, um, whatever I decided to make for it, I guess. Which, like I said, I, I don't know exactly how the hell that, that, that works in the end, but we'll just have to see. But, yeah. So I tended to do those things, super basic crap that I just, like, like, did, but, you know, I don't know. Today wasn't the most, uh, productive, but, you know, that's just how it is sometimes. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say, I guess, just get that out there, my, uh, my daily upload for this quote-unquote progress. But, yeah, thanks for watching, and, uh, I'll see you in the next one.